Welcome back, y'all. Jason and Michelle here, Echo Nesters. And if you've been following along here, this is Bad Betty. She's our 2022 Winnebago Echo. She's built on a Ford Transit all-wheel drive chassis. She's had a lot of great mods done to her. Those that have not subscribed or are unfamiliar with us, thanks for giving us a chance watching our video here. We are talking Thetford cassette toilets. Now, let's pause for a moment. I already know there's a ton of videos out there. There's great information. There's a lot of things already going on around this. How could we even tell you something you didn't know? Stick with me here. I've got a feeling by the end of this video, you're gonna learn a lot. There's gonna be some tips and tricks that you weren't aware. There's gonna be some tech stuff. It's gonna get a little different than what you're used to, but let's go ahead and get through the basics. Let's do what everybody does. Let's give you the tour of the bathroom. Come on in, let's do it. So this is Bad Betty and those that have an echo know that this is her bathroom arrangement. She's got a shower and all kinds of cool stuff happening here. And those that don't know, well, come take a peek. And behind this wall is our shower, but we don't have to talk about that. And as you can see, let's get back to toilets here. So this is our toilet. One of the neat things about these Thetfords and the way that it was designed is that it pivots and swivels around. This allows the user, we'll call it the user, to have the experience that they need while they're sitting down based on how they like to be comfortable with their knees and such. The other thing that you'll notice is that it has a little blue button back here. This actually is just, as you can hear, fills the bowl with water. As you can see, we got some water in there. We're going to demonstrate that a little different here in a moment. And then if we swing back over here, you're going to see this little indicator. That indicator right now is green. In theory, right now, Bad Betty's cassette that's housed under here, and we're gonna talk about that more, is quote unquote, still pretty empty. And that's true. If this had turned red, if you swing back over here and that green became red, we would know that Bad Betty is in need to get that cassette empty. Now, I don't typically trust this. It, it's not that it's gonna fail you per se, but I rather do a visual. A visual would mean that if we, well, actually swing back over here. Let's talk about the lever. This lever, if I move it, it engages a blade in here. And that's exactly what it's called. If you get that camera down in there, you see how that opens up that blade? And I'll demonstrate that later on the cassette. That allows whatever we've got in here, in this case it's water, to be emptied into the cassette. What it also allows us to do is get a visual inspection. That visual inspection is what Michelle and I rely on to know where our toilet sits. It may sound kind of weird and gross, but I think it's the way to go. So, kind of coming back here, we've got our lever, opens and closes. When you are done using the restroom, remember to close this. If that's kind of full and you're hitting some bumpy roads, you're gonna get some splash back that's not gonna to be too pretty. So just remember to close it. You'll probably notice it's not closed if all of a sudden you get some funk going on in here. So we're gonna come back and talk a little bit more about this. We're not gonna labor this too long. A lot of folks have covered much of that, but come on out here, join me. Let's go check out where Bad Betty houses her cassette. God, isn't she pretty? She's oh. Every time she gets on the road, she just loves it. This is what she's born to do. So, at any rate, just behind the driver's side on the Winnebago Echoes is where they house the cassette. It's a great place. You see that there's two buttons. This one is usually actuate, actuated by, or I should say, unlocked with a key. In this case, we've already unlocked it, and there's two buttons. You press them in, you open it up, and look at that. There's the cassette that we've all been talking about. Now. Everybody's kind of demonstrated how this comes in and out. I'm not going to go too much into detail, but this little blue lever, you lift up, disengages. Push it back in, it's nice and locked. So we're going to go ahead and extract it. Before I take it out, if you notice, there's an area to grab here and there's a handle here. This is probably a little bit more stable and easy to grab. If it's cold out, your hands are numb, for some reason they're wet, this is going to be slippery. This thing could weigh 35 plus pounds if it was full. Just think almost five gallons, how much water, waste, waste per gallon, and waste might be a little different on that weight. There's also another handle here. As you pull it out, I like to keep it close to my body just to keep things ergonomically good on the back. And I squat down and I set her down. Now, as you can see, there's all these mysterious buttons and levers and swing arms and all this going on here. We're gonna come back to that. After I pull it out, I take a quick peek in here. The reason I look in here is I want to make sure there's no debris or toilet paper hung up on there. 
If there is, it's, it's, it's a different scene. Obviously, it's pretty clean in here. After my visual inspection, we're good. Before we come on to our cassette toilet here, we're gonna talk about this little compartment door and what we use it for. Some people house their sewer hose in here. Now, that's fine. We don't use a sewer hose and we store what we need in another compartment, but when you open it up here, there's all kinds of goodies. You're probably wondering why I got measuring cups. Uh, we actually don't even need those, but I wanna tell you here in a minute. You might keep a set of gloves in here. A lot of people keep gloves. The reason I like to use uh, disposable gloves are in the event that you got some waste or some things happen, you got gloves that have material and stuff and you go to stick them back, they still have that nasty stuff on. I've seen a lot of people wear those gloves and I'm thinking, what's going on? You gotta put them back. We also have our hand sanitizer. And we've got a couple of um, cassette tank treatments. This is one we originally picked up. There's nothing wrong with it. We just keep it as a backup. We tend to use the Thetford EcoSmart in ours. We're gonna talk more about that in a little bit. The other thing we keep in here is just a little spray cleaner, paper towels, and some lunch bags in case we get hungry. Just kidding. And anyway, the reason we have these bags is when we're done cleaning up, we can put in here and dispose of it easily. They're easy to store. I'm gonna go ahead and toss that stuff back in there real quick. And we'll uh, take our measuring cups. Um, so when we make our cookies here, just kind of joking. We we'll toss those in there. We actually don't keep measuring cups in there. We're going to talk about why they're there in a moment. No, you have no idea. I'm sure you're guessing right now. So he's going to measure fluids and liquids. Sort of, but not. So let's get back down here. So what do we got here? Let's start with what we maybe don't know. This is an auto vent. And if you see, there's a solid filled circle and there's an open circle here. If I turn that counterclockwise and I pull out that auto vent, you're gonna notice that one, that's fresh water, clean water, by the way, we've cleaned this just for this video. We've got a couple seals here, and we've got this little foam absorber. This auto vent that's sitting in here just kind of does its own thing. You'll want to peek at that. I tend to look at it. Let this plane go by, sorry about that. Nice bike. We tend to look at this about every 10 dumps. You could shorten that, you don't have to look at it, but I recommend it. In the event that this gets kind of clogged up or as this foam seal wears, you're gonna get more odors through here. So let's go ahead and lock that into place. Now, we're gonna come over here and we see the same little indicator here that says it's in lock position because it's a solid circle and open. So I'm gonna go clockwise. And what do we pull out of here? Let me just go ahead and Nice and easy. Oh, look at that, it's a float. Those that maybe have some automotive background, you might remember these old floats on some of the cars before we had all those uh, electronic gas tank readings. But as you notice here, there's a replaceable rubber seal. And this float arm. This float arm is something you wanna maintain every single time you empty the toilet. I'm gonna tell you why. Depending what type of toilet paper you use, let's say that you're not using the manufacturer's recommended, and we'll put links to all this stuff there, and some stuff gets caught up around here, that float lever is gonna get stuck in a position, and it's not gonna tell you the truth about the level of your tank. So again, you can purchase this at the end of our video. We have part numbers for all this good stuff. If you happen to damage it, break it, lose it. Now, you might ask, how could you damage that? When we get to our next video, or I shouldn't say our next video, the next segment of our video, we're gonna be talking more about what would cause that damage, but I'll get to that in a moment. This here, we're all pretty familiar with. This is a vent button. It releases pressure when we go to dump, and we're gonna come back to that and demonstrate in a little bit. Now we wonder, like, what's going on here? So if I slide this back, we take a peek in here, we see what's called the blade. That blade is opened and engaged by this lever. Now. We don't touch this lever to do it. It's all automatic when we move the lever that's inside there as we demonstrated. It moves all this back here because what happens when we slide this in, it catches this, it pushes it back into an open position. This here, when we open and close from the lever, allows us to discharge our waste. Now, let's come back in here. You'll notice there's a rubber seal here. That is an item that needs to be maintained. There's a lubricant that you can put on that to keep it in good condition. And it's also something that at the end of the video we'll show you a link that can be replaced. My understanding is some of these toilets have failed on people out in the field. They've had some messes, they didn't know what to do and they bought another toilet and then they bought a backup toilet. 
The cheapest I saw one of these is $144. I think they ranged up to $250. I don't need $500 worth of toilets carrying around on here. What I need to understand, and we're hoping that we're helping you here, is where do I get these components? If they fail, how do I rebuild them? Where do I get the parts? And that's kind of the cool stuff that we're gonna be talking about here. Now, earlier we talked measuring cups. So we got this cap. I wish I could make that brake sound like and hit the brakes. It's, it's a cap, but it's not really a cap. It's a measuring cup. You don't believe me? Again, this is clean water. This has been sterilized pre. Uh, what do you see there? Are those milliliters measurements? Be, yeah. Okay, let's swing around here. Oh, look at that. We got two ounces and four ounces. We even have uh, an indicator in there that tells us our milliliters. So this is a measuring cup. Remember when we were in here and we were talking about some of the stuff that we carry? Manufacturer gives a recommendation. We're not sure how we're going to measure it. Well, what do you know? Thetford gave us the indicators right here. X number of ounces in here. Boom. We dump it in here. We trade our toilet. We'll demonstrate that later. We put the cap back on. We swing the little disposal arm back into place and we're good. Now, this obviously pivots numerous ways. This is also a replaceable item, but hey, while we're talking about components that are replaceable, let's talk about this real quick. Um, let's say I'm getting ready to dispose of my waste and I set this down and I'm in an outhouse. I actually prefer the outhouses or outhouse style uh, dump stations. I'll explain why over flush toilets, but there's a way to get around those flush toilets so you don't get some kickback. I have to admit that happened, it's gross, um, but we're gonna move past that. Let's say you set it there and it drops into the bottom of an outhouse. I can tell you now I'm pretty brave about retrieving things, I'm not going in there. This little unit here is about $45. We don't wanna lose it, but if we did, we can order it because we're gonna give you the part number for it and we're back in business. We don't have to order an entire unit here and that's the key. So let's talk about, we've got the unit out here. We're getting ready to go into the outhouse and we've got great pavement or we've got some turf or some grass, pretty simple. We're gonna tip it up. We've got kind of a little arm right here that kicks up you'll hear it clicked in place and it looks like luggage pulls nice and smooth and again this is operating because we've only got about a gallon and a half two gallons in here for the video purpose locks back down in the event that you had more gravel or rough terrain you'll probably know that you're going to pack about 35 pounds on over but because we have some great pavement here can't tell that wasn't planned right so we go like that, lock it into place, make sure it's secure. Mosey on along here, nonchalantly like we're cruising through the airport, bus terminal. And we're gonna head on over to our dump station. So meet us in here if you can. See you in a moment. I think we're sticking with you guys. Not too much before. Well, we're here. You're probably wondering why I got this. I'm gonna tell you here in a moment. Got our gloves and whatnot. Um, we're gonna go ahead and prepare to enter the notorious outhouse. Two things are gonna happen. This is gonna be gorgeous, beautiful tile. I mean, it's just gonna be a dream, or it's gonna be a category four scene. So, let's see what we got done. All right, not too bad. Got our gloves on, treatment, a little bit of water. On in. You're going to notice that I kind of stop a little bit away from this situation here. Put our gloves down. Spin this around just so you can see it. We're going to go ahead and lower our arm. I like to set this in as clean a place as possible. And as we talked about earlier, we've got our vent button, we've got our arm here, and we've got our measuring cup. So, our measuring cup. When we release our measuring cup slash cap, it's for the purpose of disposing and also treating our tank. I'm gonna put it back on here just for a few moments. We also talked about earlier about the operation of this blade here. Now, if you notice, I've got it open. I just engaged it just so that we could kind of see what's going on there. We're gonna talk about why we'd open that in here in just a little bit, but just to get us started, Go ahead and lift up the lid. I've got my gloves on because you never know what you're running into here. 
I'm gonna take off my measuring cup. I'm gonna set it away from the disposal because I don't want it dropping in there. That's expensive. If I don't have it, we got a situation. I'm gonna pick this up, keeping it close to my body. We'll assume that we've got 35 pounds of goodies in here. I'm gonna go ahead and lean it, tip it, engage my vent button, and begin to dump. Once I've done that, I'm gonna bring it back down. We're actually not finished. I'm gonna take my measuring cup. I'm gonna put it back on here. I'm gonna close the arm, and I'm gonna access the blade area. If this was a restroom where we had water available or maybe they had a spigot outside, it'd be great. I have a little bag here with about a half a gallon of water, and I'm now going to pour it directly into my cassette. Now, the reason that we're doing that, and this is clean water, and I'm gonna close the blade, re-engage it, is we wanna kinda of make sure we got everything out of here, especially if you're doing number two in here. So the way to do that, pick it back up. Now, we do not wanna shake this violently. Remember, we have our float, and our float is something we don't wanna damage. If there's some debris caught in there, some toilet paper, and we shake this vigorously, we can damage that float and swing it around. We're gonna give it just a nice little swirl here kind of loosen up some stuff. Set her back down. Again, removing our cap, keeping it out of the way, giving it another disposal. And if I feel pretty satisfied with what I'm seeing coming out of there, it's more clear than not, I'll call it done. That may take three or four, let's say, uh, trips to that there. Close this back up. And what I like to do is just add a courtesy because I'm thinking about it here. Is maybe we did some stuff here, just take care of it for the next person. Now, before I leave here, I'm gonna use my measuring cup. Remember, it has little measuring indicators by ounces. The manufacturer tells us how much we wanna put in here. So, I'm gonna go ahead, and I can use one or two things. If we come into the light just a bit, you can see there's indicators in there, and you can see that there's measurement indicators here. Just like that. So, we'll go ahead and put in the recommendation. We'll slide our arm back. We'll open the blade again. We'll take our treatment, put it in here. Don't forget to close your blades. Close everything back up. Get her all situated. And again, we just happen to use Thetford's brand right here. It controls the odor. It's also digest some waste, so to speak. Close the lid, make sure this is good and secured. Pick up our goodies here. Not sure whose, oh, that's ours. And again, we don't drink from this. It's just in case we're at a place where we don't have some water. We wanna treat it here. Pick up our goodies. Remember right now, this is empty, so it's really lightweight. That's why I'm picking it up like this. Close down the outhouse. So come join me, we're gonna have some more fun. Keep up again. All right, we're back with Bad Betty. We've got our empty cassette here, our empty bag that we use for water. We will not drink out of this. It's strictly for this purpose. Our gloves. I'm actually not going to worry too much about the another set of gloves right now. But as you know, this is where Bad Betty houses uh, her cassette, and this is where we tend to keep our stuff. We've got our hand sanitizer. We'll be using that for sure. Our disinfected cleaner, some rags, and also where we keep our treatments. So, we know we've already added our treatment here, and I'm gonna slide this in. This was on an outhouse floor, and some folks, they have problems aiming, and you know, I'm not here to judge, but it's like a sprinkler went off in there maybe. So what I like to do is just kind of wipe Bad Betty down here get her a little bit more clean. Even though the compartment's made for this, I just like things to be a little more cabin clean. Let's we'll slide her back in. Now, before I put her back in, let's, let's actually come back here. We were in there, there was a lot going on. I might've forgot something. Is the blade closed? Yes, it is. How do I know? I can double check it. Great. Slide arms in place. I heard it click. Pick this up, keep it close to the body. Keep it back in good shape. Make sure it's locked in. If it weren't locked in, say I just tossed it in there, what's gonna happen is everything's not gonna engage properly and you're gonna have a mess. I'm probably not gonna demonstrate that. Now, 
As I talked about earlier, I like to keep these little bags to dispose of the things that I don't want to keep around. So, go ahead and crumble that up. Bring out some of my hand sanitizer. Pretty boring stuff this part of the video, but what the heck, right? Store everything back in this wonderful compartment. Got my gloves, my paper towels. And I keep this bag in here because I know I'm not gonna drink from it. However, sometimes you're wondering, hey, where would I want to fill it from? Well, you know, Bad Betty. And our Echo's come equipped with some pretty cool stuff. Got our hose we can attach here. We can fill it up with water. I like just keeping these just for that purpose. Um, I'm gonna shut the pump off just for kicks. Lock her back down. And then I just store my bag back in here. There's lots of room in there. You, you wouldn't believe it. If I could squeeze in there, I'd probably sit in there. And let's say that's done, right? Nope, nope, nope. Follow me back. One more thing. And I'm guessing we have it locked because we walked away from here for a little bit. So I'm going to have to show him the keys real quick. I'm going to invite you all back in. Maybe next time I invite you in for a cup of coffee, a drink, soda. But we're still talking business here, so to speak. So... We're back at Bad Betty's bathroom. Come on in. Let's kick our light on. Now, we know that we've got our treatment in here and we need to get some water back in here. Manufacturer says that we need some water in the bottom of this. When I say all the time, except for when we're storing it. So to do that, I make sure the actuator arm is closed, closest to me. I fill it about a quarter to a half. Um, you know, your measurement's your measurement. Um, there is a recommendation, but you just want some water down in there. I then open it up. Don't forget to shut your blade. Close the lid. By keeping the blade closed and the lid closed, we're going to also help reduce odors or maybe some contaminants. But we're going to put our treatment in there. We shouldn't have too much of that going on. We can go dispose of our bag. Things are looking good. So again, thanks for joining us. We hope you hit the subscribe button. We hope you learned a lot about your Thetford toilet. Recap, there's seals you can replace. There's items you need to maintain. Every single time you dump that toilet, check that flow. Why? Debris, toilet paper, things could be caught up on there. Auto vent, five to 10 times, every five to 10 dumps, I should say, disposals. Take a look, just make sure the gaskets and seals are in good condition. Top of the bowl, where our blade is, we talked about the seal there keeping it lubricated. We're going to leave some information link on the product you use there. In the event that any of those items fail, we're going to have a whole list here of things that you can refer to, you can get. You do not have to buy an entire new toilet just because something failed. Wheels break, handle break, I've got it all covered for you. Again, hope this is useful. Thanks for joining us and Bad Betty. Uh, maybe she'll see you all again. Peace. Well, here we are, and thanks for hanging in there with us. As you will see, I have noted the most commonly replaced items, which you'll see over here I highlighted. These are the things that we spoke about in the video that you're gonna to wanna to maintain and could be failure points and or just maintenance items. There's actually about 24 items that you'll find on the link, but I went ahead and just grabbed the most commonly replaced ones, but anything else you see here mostly has a part number. We hope the link is helpful. We hope the information was helpful. And again, thanks for joining us. Please hit the subscribe button. Look forward to hearing from y'all in the comments section.